But the event appealed and was only known by, I think, Americans. There were, the girl that won the first one was a German gal, I think, and she was on a tiny, small capacity European motorcycle, and she actually won the cannonball. Even though her motorcycle and her were an exception to the rule, um, they took it. And that's kind of how the ruling goes. Uh, the more, the smaller displacement your motorcycle is, um, the older your motorcycle is, it gives you an advantage. So say of 130 riders, we have uh, 10 guys that have perfect scores. Okay, do they all get first place? No. There's going to be, the person that gets it's going to have the oldest bike, going to have the smallest displacement, and then a few other little nuances that will make them definitely the first place. I mean, there's a certain honor in having a perfect score, but it's your bike. If you choose, for instance, there were guys in the, in the up to 15, that the, the original intention of Lonnie was to explain that 1915 motorcycles and prior, I don't think he intended to include 15 because that 15 Harley has a three-speed transmission and is really a next generation bike. But guys that split the hair on that rule were able to have a next generation bike in the first generation thing. So technically a guy in this race with 1936 could run like a knucklehead Harley Davidson. That EL motor is an overhead valve fairly modern motorcycle. The proportions and everything of that are what's really based on the over silhouette of a new motorcycle. If you wanted to go a little harder, you'd go with earlier generations. And that's how the more difficult machine you have gives you the advantage in the ranking.